American. The Washington Post says an American diplomat is carrying a letter to Saudi Arabia pledging U.S. military support to protect Persian Gulf shipping. The paper says U.S. forces would be used only if requested by Gulf, Gulf allies. However, there is no confirmation of that from the State Department. Pentagon sources are calling the buildup of Soviet submarines off America's coast a political move of little military significance. CNN's Gene Randall says the Soviet's top military man, Dmitry Ustinov, made the announcement from Moscow. No official Pentagon response to Ustinov's weekend interview, though senior Defense Department officials say they see nothing new in it, that it is a crude attempt to interfere in American politics. Correspondents are also being referred to a letter dated February 7th, written by General John Vesey, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. In it, Vesey said there was no cause for alarm, either in the increased number of Soviet submarines off the United States, or in Moscow's decision to deploy new land-based nuclear missiles. Soviet Defense Minister Ustinov tied it all to the deployment of American crews and Pershing II ballistic missiles in Western Europe, a definitive Soviet military response. But the State Department said there had been no significant change in the Soviet military situation. Spokesman Alan Romberg said the so-called Soviet counter-deployments were an effort to pressure the United States on arms control. And that we have made clear uh, that we are prepared uh, at the negotiating table uh, to continue to negotiate in good faith uh, and to find mutually agreeable solutions. However, we have also made clear that we are not in the posture of trying to buy the Soviets back to the table and that the place to negotiate an INF agreement is at the negotiating table and not by trying to make some concessions ahead of time. Not only were Marshal Ustinov's words brushed aside in Washington, the Pentagon even found some good news in them. If Moscow has decided to keep a much larger submarine force off America's shorelines, the argument goes, it'll be a lot easier to keep track of them than if they had stayed closer to their home waters. Further, we are told, the only increased military threat will be the potential U.S. threat to those Soviet submarines. Gene Randall, CNN, the Pentagon. Around the world, around the clock, this is CNN Headline News. President Reagan is setting up a panel to examine the effects of pornography on our society and to come up with ways to combat the growing problem. He made that announcement after he signed a new law that will crack down on distributors of child pornography. Mr. Reagan says there is no one more vicious than a person who profits from the abuse of children. For years, some people have argued that this kind of pornography is a matter of artistic creativity and freedom of expression and so on and so on and they go on with that. Well, it's not. This pornography is ugly and dangerous. If we do not move against it and protect our children, then we as a society just aren't worth much. The state of California is using closed circuit television in a child molestation trial to pull, put the alleged victims at, at ease while giving testimony. CNN's Pete Pepper has the story from Los Angeles. The case involved accusations of child molestation made against this man. 57-year-old Dr. Campbell Greenup, a teacher charged with fondling eight of his young female students. The idea, agreed upon by prosecution and defense, was to spare the children the ordeal of public testimony during a preliminary hearing. The children only passed through the courtroom en route to private chambers accompanied by a parent. When they testified, they went into a small room and talked into a TV camera, watching the lawyers and defendant on monitors of their own. Prosecutor Ken Freeman believes that this method will be much easier for a child to take than testifying before a packed courtroom. We have to balance uh, the needs of the victim and the needs of society to protect these victims against uh, the rights of the defendant. We don't want to compromise their rights. Defense attorney Ed yes. Masry agreed to the procedure because his client wanted it that way. But Masry says he still has his doubts. There's a danger in that to both the defendant and the prosecution. Uh, I don't know what effect looking into this camera is going to have on that child, whether it's going to put him further into a realm of fantasy or whether or not he's going to be uh, truthful, the witness will be truthful. These are the things we just don't know. If today's court session is any indication, the pressure on a child during testimony is still very great. 
The eight-year-old girl who told of being repeatedly fondled in class was very uneasy at first. She laughed nervously, but under questioning, admitted being scared and frightened. And twice, she broke down and sobbed, crying so severely that court went into recess so the child could be calmed down. Pete Pepper, CNN, Los Angeles. The American Lung Association is warning that marijuana contains many of the cancer-promoting agents found in cigarettes. With that, the group is kicking off an anti-pot campaign aimed at the youth of the nation. The association has listened to the help of the First Lady Nancy Reagan and the cast of the TV series Fame. Fame stars will be featured in anti-pot ads starting September 1st. The National Restaurant Association plans to wage war on drunk driving. The head of the association says the group is launching a campaign to stop restaurants and bars from selling too much liquor to patrons. The program is set to begin this summer with radio and TV public service announcements on the dangers of drunk driving. The family of a teenager killed in an amusement ride accident at the Texas State Fair has made a $20 million settlement with the ride's makers and owners. William Phillips died last October when a two-passenger car fell from the Enterprise ride and was thrown into a nearby crowd. The out-of-court agreement with the victim's family still has to be approved by a U.S. District Court judge. Ford Motor Company is recalling 13,000 shuttle buses. The automaker says there is a danger of gas tanks falling off the buses. The buses are the Ford E350 Econo line vans from the year 1980 through 1984. Ford is also recalling about 300 heavy-duty trucks, which could have steering problems. Doctors in Michigan say certain sunglasses may do the wearer's eyes more harm than good. CNN's Robert Vito reports the shaded lenses may not be really protecting the eyes from the sun. The sun, it has always been a spectacle to worship. Early man believed in making human sacrifices to a sun god for their protection. Modern day sun worshippers use lotions and sunglasses to protect them against the rays of the sun. But now an eye surgeon in Detroit is claiming the wearing of sunglasses may cause cataracts. Let me just look here and see how you're doing. Dr. Harry Spiro says because sunglasses filter out visible light, the darkness they create causes the pupil of the eye to open wide. The danger he believes is that most sunglasses don't filter out all of the sun's harmful, invisible ultraviolet rays that he claims can enter the eye through a wide open pupil, collect in the lens, and over a period of time cause cataracts. At least half the people in the United States today wearing sunglasses are in danger of having harmful effects from ultraviolet light. That's but there are other ophthalmologists, such as Dr. David Bogorad, who disagree with that claim. I think that is an overstatement. It is likely to present a misinformation to the average person who may fear that his or her sunglasses will cause damage when in fact there's no good evidence that that is very likely. The world's largest manufacturer of sunglasses, Foster Grant, said it had seen enough medical studies linking ultraviolet light and cataracts and in 1982 began using a special chemical in its sunglasses to block out all ultraviolet light. Regardless, the Sunglass Association of America says that practically all non-prescription and prescription sunglasses significantly reduce the amount of ultraviolet light reaching a person's eyes and are all safe. To find out how much ultraviolet light many sunglasses actually filtered, CNN took a half dozen pair currently sold on the market to Michigan State University. There, with the use of a special machine, physicists found that two pair of Foster Grant sunglasses filtered out ultraviolet rays 100%. Another brand name filtered out the majority of ultraviolet light. But of the next three pairs tested, all different brand name sunglasses, two filtered out little ultraviolet light, while one pair filtered out none at all. Dr. Spiro believes consumers should only buy sunglasses that are clearly marked with a label that advertises they eliminate more than 99% of ultraviolet rays. Without that proof, he says, people should not wear sunglasses, but instead should allow the pupil of the eye to constrict naturally in sunlight and thus block out ultraviolet rays. Robert Vito, CNN, Detroit. More news after this. It's 19 minutes past the hour. Time to check the latest sports. This is Tom Steiner, CNN Sports. In a game they had to win, they won. Milwaukee stayed alive in the Eastern Conference Finals with a convincing 122-113 win over Boston. The 
Bucks weathered the storm in the crucial fourth quarter to close the Celtics' lead to three games to one in the best of seven series. Paul Pressey came off the bench to lead the Bucks in scoring with 22 points. In a losing effort, Larry Bird scored 17 of his game-high 32 points in the final quarter. The Bucks will take their show on the road for Game 5 in Boston Wednesday night. With the win, Boston can advance to the finals for the second time in four years. In the Western Conference Finals, the Lakers are just one game away now from advancing to the NBA Championship Series. L.A. is coming off an impressive 126-115 win Sunday in Phoenix. The victory gave the Lakers a commanding 3-1 lead in the best of seven series over the Suns. Are the Lakers looking past the Suns in Game 5 into their third straight championship series? L.A. guard Magic Johnson. Well, no question about it. You know you're going to think that way. But you can't go in the game thinking to, to head to Boston because you can lose. So we're going to just concentrate on the winning, and then we say, hey, we're in the championship if we take care of business. News off the court, the Portland Trailblazers were fined a quarter of a million dollars Monday by Commissioner David Stern for improper contact with two All-American centers. Houston's Akeem Olajuwon and Georgetown's Patrick Ewing. NBA bylaws prohibit any NBA team from directly or indirectly contacting players with remaining college eligibility. Portland Executive Vice President Harry Glickman says a clarification of the rules is needed badly. I think probably uh, uh, the rule will be clarified, or if it's not, uh, <laughs> you can be very sure that the Blazers will not talk to anybody's 12th cousin from here on in. To baseball, Dennis Eckersley defeated Cleveland for the second time in six days as the Red Sox downed the Indians 6-3. In other games, the Blue Jays nipped the Twins 3-2 and Chicago downed the Royals 8-4. In the National League, just one game, the Astros edged St. Louis 3-2. One game in the USFL, the New Jersey Generals beat the Pittsburgh Maulers 16-14. Tom Steiner, CNN Sports. The long-awaited Jackson Tour opens June 22nd at the Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. The parents of the singing sensations announced the first tour late date yesterday. Katherine Jackson says complaints from black community leaders prompted some changes in tour plans. We will make every effort to play previously excluded cities. And those cities were New York, Chicago, Detroit, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., Atlanta, and Cleveland, Ohio. Um, we'd like to play every city in the nation, but that's just uh, humanly impossible. Recapping the hour's top stories, here are the CNN headlines. A major breakthrough in the Las Vegas casino strike. Tentative agreements have been negotiated with 11 hotels. If they're eventually approved, it would leave fewer than 1,800 workers still on strike. Hundreds of union workers in Toledo, Ohio, clashed with police last night. More than 30 people were arrested, and at least six officers were injured. The workers were supporting the strike of a local auto parts company. President Reagan has apparently sent a letter to Saudi Arabia saying the United States is prepared to consider military action to protect oil tankers in the Persian Gulf. Reagan sent the letter to King Fahd yesterday, and he scheduled a news conference for tonight. El Salvador's president-elect Jose Napoleon Duarte says he will never seek American troops to fight leftist guerrillas in his country. However, he also says he needs U.S. military aid without conditions. For the hour's top stories, I'm Wally Kaiser. Stay tuned. The news continues. How many times have you been watching TV and thought you'd like to change or control the action? A company in New York has come up with a way for the viewer to do just that. CNN's Jenna Settle reports. a music video on TV and choosing the shots yourself by push button. It's a new invention called Active Television, ACTV for short, developed by Dr. Michael Freeman. This is responsive participative programming. It's personalized TV unlike anything else that exists right now. You use this activator and you push a button and that translates itself into actual programming content changes that you're watching. So if you want an exercise program, for example, for your specific needs, you indicate whether you want to work on the tummy and rear, legs and thighs, chest and arms, whether you're male, female, or whether you want a beginner, intermediate, or advanced program. That instantly gets embedded into the show, and you now watch a workout show specifically geared to your needs. ACTV must be hooked up through a cable TV connection, and the program choices must be run by the cable company. We could make a sports channel, 
interactive for an hour a day, a children's channel for a different hour a day, and an exercise program interactive for that hour. In addition, ACTV will be creating some of its own programming to utilize other capabilities of the system. Right now, ACTV is only experimental. The company has to sell the system to cable operators and develop programming. But once ACTV is available to the home viewer, the company estimates it will only cost two to five dollars extra per month on top of your regular cable TV subscription. Janice Settle, CNN, New York. Blue skies and sunshine dominate the weather picture today for the plains, Rocky Mountains, and desert southwest. But a wet day is in the works east of the Mississippi. Rain and thunderstorms will reach from Dixie to the Great Lakes. Some of those storms could be on the severe side. Drizzle will dampen the Washington and Oregon coast as well, and temperatures in the northwest will be in the 60s. 80s and 90s will heat much of the U.S. with sizzling 100-degree readings in the store for the deserts and interior southern California. London's Chelsea District is busting out all over this week during what's billed as the world's biggest flower show. And as CNN's Richard Blystone reports, some tension, however mild, lurks beneath the show's tranquil air. Don't be fooled by the look of gentility. This is the world of big-time horticulture, and nice nasturtiums finish last. Forget cricket, gardening is Britain's biggest national sport, and the Chelsea Flower Show is the Super Bowl of the mulch and manure mob. Security is tight. These people will stoop to anything to take home a prize with their pelargoniums. A successful gardener can become a star. One ribbon from Chelsea can crown a lifetime of mucking around on hands and knees and make worthwhile all those years of battling among the slugs and the black spot and the green flies and the beetles. We've got 35 acres of all laid out gardens. But it's, uh, it's a lot of work. I don't do it on my own. I've got some gardeners as well, but it's a wonderful thing, you know. It's, it's a great um, relaxation too, and I recommend it. It's much better than all that noisy music. Spoken like an amateur, Chelsea competitors leave as little as they can to nature. They have ways of making the grass behave, and the roses rise to the occasion a month before their time. Banned from this year's show and staging a sit-in outside, a band of garden gnomes and their leaders. For some reason they're saying no, they won't allow us in there. No no. No gnomes. Gnome way. Just gnome way. Unlike some garden statues, these gnomes seem to be decently fully dressed folk. Anyone who'd keep them out must be a real misnomer. Richard Blystone, CNN at the Chelsea Flower Show. That's our report. Thanks for joining us. I'm Peter Ford. Around the world every half hour. This is CNN Headline News.